Hey guys, welcome back to another Algebra 2 lesson. This is lesson 1-5 on graphing linear functions and inequalities. So we're going to jump in and get started today. I have the warm-up posted here on the screen. I would like for you to, as always, pause the video, take a second to work some of these out, and then unpause to check your answers. All right, so which lines are graphs of functions? Functions are lines R, S, and U. T is not a function because it's straight up and down. And in order for something to be a function, we know that each X can be paired with exactly one Y. Well, we have the value of X here being paired with multiple different Y values. So that is why T is not a function. Uh, find the coordinates of the points on line R. A is found at 0, 1. B is found, we go over 2, up 1, 2, 3, so 2, 3. And C is at 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, comma, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 5, 6. And then to find the slope of each line, I can see that these two are um, increasing. Obviously, S is going to have a slope of 0, and T slope is going to be undefined, because if you think about what... Um, the slope is of a line is the change in y over the change in the x coordinates. So if I was to subtract my x coordinate, it's the same one, so I'd have 3 minus 3 in the denominator. So I'm going to get a divide by 0 error if I was to type this into a calculator, but there is no change in the x. So there's a 0, that's why the slope is undefined. And of course there's no movement on line S, we can see there's no steepness, that's all slope is, is measuring the steepness, so it is a slope of 0. To measure the slope of line R, I would go up 1, 2, 3, over 1, 2, 3. So rise over run, I went up 3 and over 3, 3 over 3 is 1. Of course, it only asks for T and S, so we can stop there. I just wanted to recap with you on how to calculate the slope of line R. So looking at today's standards, we have ACED3 and FIF4. Um, what we're going to be doing to meet these standards is graphing things and interpreting these linear graphs and in inequalities. So important thing here is some vocabulary. Take a second to either go through your workbook and highlight these vocabulary words or um, write these down because I do think it is very important to know and understand the vocabulary because if you don't know the vocabulary then you can't answer questions that use these vocabulary words in them. So let's get started. Graphing linear functions. The graph of a function represents all ordered pairs that are true for the function. You can use various methods to graph linear functions. So we're going to watch this little video to learn about different methods of graphing linear functions. There are several methods of graphing linear functions. One is by making a table. Start to build a table by choosing several values of x. Then complete the table by evaluating the function for each value of x. Use the x and y values from the table to graph the ordered pairs. Then draw a line through the points. You can also graph a linear function by using the intercepts. To find the x-intercept, find the value of x when y equals 0. Graph the x-intercept on the x-axis. To find the y-intercept, find the value of y when x equals 0. Graph the y-intercept on the y-axis. Then draw a line through the two points. Finally, you can graph a linear function by using the slope and y-intercept. Use the slope-intercept form of the equation to find the y-intercept. Plot the y-intercept on the y-axis. Next, identify the slope from the equation. Then use the slope to move from the y-intercept to a second point on the graph. Then draw a line through the two points. I love this little video. It sums up 
so many lessons that I teach in Algebra 1. It's a very nice little summary of how to um, graph a line using a table, using um, the x and y intercepts, and then of course using your slope and y intercept. And to me, I always find that what is easier depends on how the problem is written to begin with. Clearly, if I'm given this problem that's in slope intercept form, I'm going to use the slope and the y intercept. But if I'm given an equation that's written like this one, then I'm going to want to use the intercepts because it's going to be really easy to plug in a zero, then solve for x, then plug in a zero for x and solve for y. That to me is much easier than trying to convert it into slope intercept form. I can do that more quickly. Um, being a math teacher, they're neither one real complicated, but that's what I would do is plug in the zeros because it's quicker and I like quick. I'm sure that you guys like it to be quick when you're doing a bunch of math problems. So I plug it, like I said, it depends on the problem. Very rarely will I ever sit down and make a table because to me that's not quick. Um, it takes some time. But if that works for you, it doesn't matter to me which method you use. Um, if you don't like using the equation here and plugging these in, you can always convert that into slope intercept form. It depends on what works best for you. And that's what's so nice about algebra is that there are so many different ways that you can go about getting the correct answer. And I think a lot of times people don't like that, but I love that because if there are many ways that you can do it, then you get to pick the way that works best for you. And it's not right or wrong to use one method and not the other. It's what works best for you. So my job is to show you all the methods. It's your job to then figure out which one makes the most sense for you. Or maybe you're like me and you like using multiple methods depending on the situation. So let's look at example one to graph this using a table. So this is kind of a summary of um, several lessons that I would teach in Algebra 1 because you should have already seen this before. So we're going to recap and we're going to put it all into one lesson and well, actually two lessons. I'm going to break it up into two, but we're going to put it all into um, one big thought here. So we're looking at this equation, x plus 3y minus 6 equals 0. That is my original function. So what I'm going to do first, or what they did, was subtract x from each side. Then they added 6 to both sides, and then they divided by 3. So the whole point of what they're doing here is to get it in slope-intercept form. So now that I'm down here at the bottom looking at y equals negative 1 third x plus 2, I immediately know the y-intercept, and I immediately know the slope of my line. The y-intercept is always this constant and the slope is always the coefficient of the x term when y is by itself. So let's look at making a table then. They just pick some random values. Why do you think they chose negative 6, negative 3, 0, 3, and 6? Why did they choose multiples of 3 instead of 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3? What do you think? I'm going to assume, and if you said this, I'm sure you're correct, that they chose multiples of 3 because of this fraction 1 third. What happens if I multiply um, negative 6 by a negative 1 third? I'm going to get out a whole number. I'm going to get out a positive 2, right? 2 plus 2 is 4. Once again, looking at this multiple of 3, negative 1 third times a negative 3 is a positive 1. So these numbers are going to, they're, since they're multiples of 3 and I'm timesing it by one third, I'm still going to get whole number answers. We don't want to try to deal with fractions when we're graphing, like my x being, if we plugged in an x of 1, then I'm going to have negative one third plus 2, so then I'm going to have to graph, you know, somewhere in between 1 and 2, and that's, that's not going to work out very well. So they plug these numbers in. Negative one third times negative six is a positive two. Two plus two is four. Can't remember if that's what I said or not. I hope it is. <laughs> if not, I must have made a mistake somewhere. But anyway, the answer is four, three, two, one, and zero. So then what they did was they plotted. We, they ignored this whole middle chart because we only needed it to find the y. So ignoring the middle part of the chart and just focusing in on the x and the y. When I plug in a negative six for x, my corresponding y value is a 4. So they plotted it, negative 6, 4. 
When I plugged in a negative 3, I got out a positive 3. When I plug in 0, I get out 2. When I plug in 3, I get out 1. And when I plug in 0 I, or 6, I get out a 0. So there is my graph. Now we can connect it using a line. And there we have it. There is how you graph using a table. Example two, if you're following along in your workbook, I am on page, let's see here, what page am I on in your workbook? Page 39 at the bottom of the page. We're going to move through the slides to see how to graph the function using the x and y intercepts. So this is given to me in standard form. So when it's given to me in standard form, it's very easy to just plug in 0 for y, plug in 0 for x. So if I plug in 0 for y, that gets rid of this negative 2 term. It's gone. So I'm just left with 3x equals negative 12. Divide both sides by 3, and I get negative 4. So the coordinates of this point then are when x is negative 4, y was 0. So I have an ordered pair, negative 4, 0. Same thing here. We have our original function. This time, though, instead of replacing y with 0, we're going to replace x with 0. That gets rid of this term. Now, don't forget that negative there. Just because this goes away doesn't mean that minus goes away. That's attached to that 2, making it a negative 2y. Divide both sides by negative 2, and I get 6. So when x is 0, y is 6, so I have this ordered pair. Now we can plot those two points and connect them with a line, and voila, there we have it. There's the graph of our function. All right, in example three, graph by using the slope and the y-intercept. So what is our slope? If you recall, the slope is the m, and the y equals mx plus b, so it's the coefficient of the x term. Using that vocabulary, we've got three halves. Let me click on this button to type it in. Three over two is our slope. My y-intercept is, it's tempting to say 4, but we've got to look at it by itself. If I ignore the y equals 3 half x and I just focus in on that 4 and the sign in front of it, that is a negative 4. If we read it as an entire problem, we say y equals 3 halves x minus 4. But if I focus in on that one term, I have to look at the sign in front of it and then make that a negative 4. So... What we would do first then is, since this is the y-intercept, we're going to plot it along the y-axis down here at negative 4, which is what they've done. Then we can rise 3, run 2. So I go rise 1, 2, 3, run 2, 1, 2. You might think, why did she go to the right? Why didn't she go to the left? Well, this is a positive. So I know that my line should be going up. Plus, I went in the positive direction 3, and I'm going to go in the positive direction 2 units because it's a positive 3 halves. So go up 3 over 2, up 3 over 2, and now we can connect those points with a line, and you have just graphed your equation. I'm going to stop here for today for this video, and then I will have another one to finish up this lesson.